Who'd have thought that 36 years later we would be getting a sequel to the 1988 original Beetlejuice film? I sure as hell didn't. The juice is loose. I remember watching Beetlejuice as a kid for the first time thinking, what the hell is this? This is so chaotic. And then I revisited it as an adult and again, what the hell is this? This is so chaotic. But of course, I love Tim Burton. And as an adult, I found a different sort of appreciation for the film. So I do really like the first one. I dig the sandworm. I dig Michael Keaton. I dig the vibe of the movie. I dig the weirdness. Something I love about it is that it's just brilliantly weird in its own way. But if you thought Beetlejuice was chaotic, get ready for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Because I think this one takes it to the next level and a next level of fun that you should be excited for. First of all, we got a star-studded cast here. Obviously, we have Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, all reprising their roles from the original 1980, the 88 film. But in this one, we also have Willem Dafoe, Jenna Ortega, Monica Bellucci, and Danny DeVito. So a lot of great, great actors and actresses to look forward to in this new one. And also, it's kind of shocking that this one is 36 years later because the actors, especially the ones that are reprising their roles, look so good. <laughs> It's kind of shocking. I'm impressed. So the movie opens up with a sense of familiarity, which of course right off the bat is always a good thing. You've got the opening credits spanning across the same Vermont town that is shown in the original movie. And I would say the sequel filming locations bring back a lot of nostalgia, which I love. We learned that Lydia Dietz, who was the young child in the first Beetlejuice movie, is now a, an adult and a mother in a host of a supernatural talk show. She has a daughter named Astrid and they don't have the best relationship. To put it into terms, when her mother calls Astrid, her phone says, alleged mother. So Astrid kind of thinks that Lydia is more focused on her work than she is her, and she doesn't like Lydia's relationships. So they have a strained relationship, but the relationship gets put to the test when Astrid gets lured into the land of the undead, and Lydia has to go in to save her, and guess whose help she enlists? None other than the one, the only, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Michael Keaton himself. <laughs> so much fun, okay? So she's working with Beetlejuice to get Astrid out of the land of the undead. That's the essential premise of the movie. But there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of subplots. There's a lot of chaos that we will get into. But first, I want to point out some things that I really love about the movie. Number one, I already mentioned it, but the movie is very, very nostalgic. They really stuck to the roots of the original Beetlejuice, which I think Beetlejuice fans will really appreciate. The thought processes of the character on, are on point, especially the ones reprising their roles. These actors and actresses were brilliantly able to just jump right back into their 1988 roles as if no time has passed. So that was really impressive, and Beetlejuice fans will love that. Also, the vibe of this movie is great. The coloring throughout is just beautiful. The fall foliage and then the iconic house on the hill is the same and it's magnificent and it's just gorgeous, especially draped in this black kind of sheer cloth um, because the house is in a state of mourning. <laughs> and um, the movie just feels like fall. It feels like Halloween. It's spooky. And I think people that do go into movies specifically actually looking for this vibe will really, really like this. So I'm glad that they had this come out when it did in September. Um, it's a good way to start off the fall season. Number two, this movie is actually pretty funny. Like all movies, I will say, you know, some movies have the laugh lines that hit and miss, but most of the laugh lines in this movie do hit, especially the character of Delia. I always liked her. I thought she was funny in the first one. Um, and she's funnier, even funnier in this one, I think. She has this line, I don't remember exactly what she said, but it has to do with something about a moose. And I actually audibly laughed out loud, which is very rare for me. So there's some really funny parts in here. And also Michael Keaton's character Beetlejuice has the same exact sense of humor that he did in the original 1988 film. So I know Beetlejuice fans will love that and he just feels like the same exact character. Like I said, all of these characters jumped right back into their roles like no time had passed. Number three, this movie has a really, really great soundtrack. There's this really great scene, which really adds to the mood and the vibe of the movie where this character is basically stapling themselves together, kind of like a Frankenstein type thing. And the sound <laughs> while the character is doing this is Bee Gees. And it's just, um, 
it's just good. I, I, I love it personally. And it just adds a flair of fun. And there's other uh, songs in this movie. There's a new rendition of Deo, <laughs> but it's in a little bit of a different light than <laughs> the one in the previous movie. And uh, there's a ridiculously fun song and dance number, if you know what I mean, towards the end of the film. So the soundtrack in this movie is on point. It's really fun. Number four, I absolutely love the costume design. Done by Clean Atwood, the costumes define the world that they're in and they really do bring the characters to life. Monica Bellucci's character's costume is one that really stood out to me. She's kind of like, she's the Frankenstein-like looking character um, and she wears this exquisite black wedding dress. Well, it's a white wedding dress, but she makes it black and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And her character is the ex-wife of Beetlejuice before Beetlejuice was in the Land of the Dead. And so that's kind of also a fun relationship that they um, explore. But I guarantee that you'll see these two as a major Halloween couple's costume this year. I might have to participate in this one. I love it so much. Her dress is just gorgeous. And then number five, just to wrap it up, I kind of already mentioned this, but the movie just has a great atmosphere. It's just fun. It's all sorts of fun. It's all sorts of weird. That's something I can always love and appreciate about a movie. It feels like Tim Burton. It is Tim Burton. And it really comes to life here. And uh, yeah, the atmosphere is great. One of the most important aspects of a movie is the atmosphere because that's really important for the overall experience of the film. And the experience that you'll have, I think, is just a good time. Moving on to some critiques I have for this movie. Firstly, there's a lot going on in the movie, okay? There's a lot of subplots in which some of them, if you really think about it, aren't really necessary in propelling the plot line forward. There's this character that is kind of a Dementor-like, face-sucking, psychotic bitch. <laughs> And while I love the character, I do. When you really think about the actual substance that they're adding to the plot line, it's really not much. And the whole face sucking thing is a little bit random and not all that explained, I will say. Although this is a Beetlejuice movie, I mean, I can let some random and weird things go. Like another thing is the wall climbing Beetlejuice hybrid baby <laughs> that they portray in this movie. I'm not gonna say anything more about it. <laughs> but there are some random things here, a little bit of plot gaps and some unnecessary aspects throughout the movie, which does make the focus of the movie a bit unclear at times. There are also some blatant conveniences and some timing conveniences um, throughout the movie, such as like how Lydia discovers how and when Astrid is going into the undead world and how they get out of the final conflict of the movie. But I will say these conveniences are done in a way that do make sense and ultimately do advance the plot in a relatively natural way. So it's not terrible conveniences. It's not trap from this movie conveniences. So most of the time, I do not really like chaos in movies, but I expect this in Beetlejuice. After all, it's what makes this movie so fun and unhinged. A mixed feeling that I do have about this movie, though, is the ending of it. It is kind of vague, and it kind of alludes to the idea that there might be another Beetlejuice movie to look forward to. I just don't know if I like the way they did do it. After all, though, we have Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. We would theoretically come full circle if we had a Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So... I would like to see that, and I think it would make a stellar trilogy and leave no table unturned. So I would like to see that, but the way they did it, <laughs> I'll just say it's a little weird. So I really enjoyed this one. I give this a 4.25 out of 5. I recommend it. Beetlejuice in general is not for everybody, of course, but if you enjoyed the first one, I think that you'll enjoy this one a lot, if not even more. Um, I haven't watched or looked at any other reviews, so let me get a feel real quick for what everybody else is saying. Let me look at the averages. And sometimes you can't always trust these. Can't always trust the general public to be objective. <laughs> but then again, you can't be objective in a movie because when you're doing a movie, because there's obvious biases, like I have a bias, I do like Beetlejuice. If you don't like Beetlejuice, you probably might not like this one. Uh, Beetle. Okay, it looks like the audience average rating is a 3.5. Lots of fives, Rotten Tomatoes 77%. Okay, so it looks like in general, a lot of people did enjoy it. I love when I'm kind of on par with the general public, but I also don't mind if I'm not either. <laughs> this is a great one to watch. A um, couple ways I would recommend watching this one in the theaters, of course, because it is so fun and it's fun to see it on the big screen, but with a group of friends for a spooky movie night. It has all the fall vibes and a good one to put on for your friends that don't want to um, get go, that don't want to watch like a horror movie but they want a fall Halloween spooky vibe I think that's a really great one and also gives a good laugh obviously I recommend this one if you're a big Beetlejuice fan you'll love it um if you're not a Beetlejuice fan you probably won't like it but I personally think it's better than the first one so maybe also give it a shot so those are my thoughts but what do you guys think do you guys like it
If you guys like it better than the first one, what did they do well? What did they do bad? Let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. So thanks for watching and catch me next time. Peace.